basically it comes down to the numbers it's all about the numbers numbers give you a shape and the shape gives you a feel so it all boils down to numbers and angles uh, but in the end that all translates into a feel for the guitarist yeah, yeah. and that's basically where it's at all right guys so we're back with my buddy joe joe how are you uh great what do we got going on today on the bench uh, we got this, uh, I believe it's a mid-60s guild. Um, is it S100 maybe? Yes. And the the uh, Muddy Waters guitar. Yeah. And so this guy brought it in. I don't think he really knows what he has. <laughs> but uh, he's got a really cool guitar here. Have you, uh, what do you got going on so far? Is it, did a, uh, a fret, uh, fret crown? Yeah, I level the frets and, um, you know, re them, polish them. Uh... Degunk the neck. I'll make a new uh, bar for the vibrato unit. Yeah. And he wants all the bright work cleaned up, so I'm in the process of removing all that. So, you you do build your own guitars, and we'll talk about that later. But a lot of your a lot of your stuff is guitar repair. Um, mm -hmm. Give us some insight to what 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 the average uh, repair is like. What, what do you what do you do? Well, you you really know what's going to come in the shop, and uh, but they all are stringed instruments, so. You know, basically, work the same. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, no, no job too big, too small. Basically, no. Fret jobs, everything, neck resets, whatever yeah. has to be done. Whatever has to be done. Yep. What uh, what are some of the horror stories from some of the jobs you've done? You've ever had one that really? Oh, we got the time. <laughs> <clears throat> but but uh, they're fun when it all comes together, and you got an old guitar that plays well, and this one does. Yeah. Um, it's just a cool thing. Yeah. Now. A question I like to ask a lot of guys is how important is, you know, maintaining guitar setup and a properly set up guitar? How important is that to the player, do you think? As well, to where. I, I think it's paramount because, you know, you hear from a lot of guys, man, I'm fighting it. It's, it, it's, it, it's playing tight. And uh, that all comes about from really how it's set up. Yeah. If it's set up properly. That tightness goes away, and all of a sudden they're playing well. But when you hear a player complain about, it's just, man, I'm fighting it. It's playing tight. It's usually um, the relationship between um, the the uh, action and the nut and uh, the straightness of the neck. Yeah. So you straighten that out and pretty much straighten it out. And we're in New England, so you see a lot of yeah. a lot of that. Yeah, the weather, you know. The weather plays hell with them, especially maple necks. This is a mahogany, they're more stable wood. Yeah. And I find a lot less problems, <clears throat> more problems with maple necks. Yeah. Um, like I know when I first started coming to you, I was just a, a customer before mm -hmm. you went crazy and took me under your wing. Yes. But uh, some of the things like I would, I would have, it was kind of like blasphemy the way I would want my action. I would want it set up in extremely high and... Mm -hmm. I can remember you modifying some saddles to make them work and things like that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it was really whatever you had to do to get the guitar, no matter what, to intonate right and to play right and to be 100%, whether it was, you know, it's taken a little bit in listening to the player as well. Right. It has, well, I mean, <clears throat> there's no one setting. Every player is different. And if they want something a certain way, you give them what they want because otherwise they won't be playing it. Yeah. So what's the good of it? Uh, when you first came in, your action was very high. Yeah. And uh, and that's the way you wanted it. Over the years, though, you've seemed to come down a little bit. I got older. Yeah. Yeah, you got older. <laughs> I got older, and I stopped trying to play yeah. like somebody else all yeah. the time. That's the thing right there. You know? Whereas, you know, you got into you got into doing repair how long ago? Well, it's about 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I made my first guitar, and then um, started there. Yeah. And before you started doing this, you were what did you do for work? I was an iron worker uh, for over forty years. Over forty years. Yeah. Any um any any way of relating things you did iron working to guitar repair, guitar building? No. That's the good part. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And uh, the, um, I will I will make a note too. Um, the folks should know that Joe doesn't play a guitar, doesn't play a single note, and I think that Leo Fender didn't either. So keep that in mind, you know. But um. That just goes to show you where it's somebody looking at construction and how to make things right, and and not his his mind is totally separated from what 
a guitar is going to sound like, what it's going to do. His he, he focuses on making them play, making them act right, making them work, and um, you know that's that's basically what a luthier is doing. What are uh, some some recommendations to to guys? What they want to they want to keep up on? Like you know, you want to keep up on keeping on a neck relief. Yeah, you know, I would say depending on where you live in New England, I mean, your your guitar is going to play and feel differently in the winter than it will in the yeah. middle of the summer. And so, um, if you start to feel as though you're really working a little too hard playing it, it's time to look at the uh, the setup mm -hmm. because that's usually what's doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I know sometimes it's mental, but uh, many times it's. Uh, it's the setup on the guitar. And common common things are just basically, you know, uh, sometimes a poor setup can alleviate a lot of issues, or a little one one fret could lift. Yes, uh, and with the expansion and contraction and humidity. Right, because that uh, neck is going. Like if you give a demonstration, if this was the neck, mm -hmm. so the weather is making that neck go bow up, bow down, and right. that groove that that fret is pressed into is making space. It's making and space. It's accommodating that, that. Yes, a corner of that fret could go boom. Yeah, and many that, times, and sometimes it just takes a little, a little touch, a little file on that one end of the fret, and right. then your your buzz is gone. Right, right. But um, if you think that you have a guitar setup and that's going to be the beginning and end of it all, yeah. it's not true. Especially right. as I said in the in the Wingler area. Big Paul Reed Smith fan. Yeah, I like Paul Reed Smith because of the fact, uh, not necessarily. I mean, they, they they, I think his model when he started was Gibson. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he, he thought very highly of Gibson, and and um, I think that was what he was shooting for. Uh, I think his fit and finish on his guitars are about the best out there. Right. We looked at some of the fret work on some of his some of the brand new ones, and, and uh, uh, they're, they're very good fret work. Yeah. Very good fret work. Uh, that's one of his. Um, well, he concentrated quite a bit on, on fret work. He prides himself on it, and, uh, and and it comes through in his product. The work put into it accommodates the player. Yeah, and, and and there's nothing that you put into a guitar that doesn't come back for you. Uh, if you pay uh, particular attention to certain components, um, that's just uh, what it's all about. It's the little things add up, and then when you play it, you realize, wow, it's a good sounding guitar. There's yeah. a reason for everything, yeah. and it's... It's the small uh, attention paid to the fretwork, the fit and finish, the joint, the yeah. material you use, the glue you use. Yeah, you can uh, fit a high glue or yeah. uh, you can use high glue, flish glue, or regular or uh, yellow or uh, confidence glue is very good. Yeah, um, and uh, in this day and age, finding quality wood is getting uh, more difficult. Uh, it's still there, but you pay a lot of money for it. Yeah. But it pays. If you're going to build a guitar, build it on the best that you can afford, and you won't be disappointed. You know? Don't try to cut corners. Wait until you have it to build it. Uh, you cut corners, and you'll, you'll, you'll notice the difference. You'll hear the difference. You know? That's a solid piece of advice right there. If yeah. you cut corners, you'll hear. You'll the hear the difference. Uh, so All right, so we're going we're gonna to get back to ripping these tuners out, and we'll come back and check in on some custom-built guitars that you've done in a couple minutes. You do repairs, you do build your own guitars as well, JB Guitars. Yeah, in between uh, repairs, uh, I'll be building a guitar at any given time. What's your, what's your <laughs> kind of your, your go-to? I mean, I, I, I'm a friend. I mean, I know that you're a, bit, you're a fan of the set neck. Mm -hmm. it takes a lot more work. Yep. But do you feel like there is a better sound in a set neck? Definitely. Resonance? And sustain. And transfer of sustain. Mm -hmm. And do you, are you selecting woods? You know what I mean? When, when, when I, I know the answers, but for everybody... Uh, that's I have an thinking. idea of the sound tone I'm looking for, yeah. and uh, that dictates what wood I'm going to buy and what it's going to be constructed of. So to you, there's no there's no uh, foolishness in tapping a piece of wood. You know you can hear a difference in sound in it. Uh, yeah, when I select a wood, um, I'm looking for a certain tone yeah. uh, from the individual pieces, and each species has their own their own sound, yeah. and uh, I'll select the pieces that are going to go for that particular guitar. Styles. I know that sometimes you'll go for a, a real PRS kind of vibe. A lot of times you'll go for a, a, a Gibson vibe. Mm -hmm. um, you just did a Les Paul that sold before we could even talk about it. Yeah, it's true. Uh, someone came over, visited. I uh, heard that I had completed one, and uh, he played it and he bought it. 
That's a good thing, though. Yeah. It's Tell good. us a little bit about that one. That one was a chambered body. Uh, chambered body. Um, it uh, South American mahogany uh, body and neck chambered. Um, it had a bird's eye top carved. Um, stainless steel frets. Um, uh, a Macasa ebony um, fret guard and uh, peghead veneer. Mm-hmm. Um, I use uh, Goto uh, 510 series uh, tail and bridge and one. and tuners. Yeah. And um, that's a good product and, and it sounds beautiful. What I try to do is that every component and at every stage of the guitar, I'm trying to do my best at that stage. Yeah. Uh, and I find uh, if you get a good fit, you feel good about it, then you move on, uh, you anchor the bridge, you anchor the uh, tail, and if everything is snug, that's another plus. Everything sort of fits in place. You try to do the best at every stage, you get the best material you can, the best hardware, uh, and all those little things add up so that hopefully at the end, you have a, um, an exceptional good time. Yeah. Yeah, and I know with you, especially we talked about patience earlier. You won't you won't drill a hole or, or, or cut a cut a slice or send anything home until you have mocked it up almost fully. I mean, I remember coming in here and playing guitars for you when the necks weren't even glued in; they were just clamped on. You said, "I hey, play this. I want to hear all that E string sound." Uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, before you make a commitment with a set neck, once it's in, you know, it's in. Uh, so you try to get all the alignment and the fit right, you clamp it up, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, no better or worse than screwing it together. Right. And so you have a pretty good idea what it's going to sound like, just clamped. Mm-hmm. And you get your alignment and it uh, looks good, time to glue it. Uh, mm-hmm. I wanted to build a, uh, to me, what is the uh, iconic early rock and roll guitar. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, to me, a, a 335 is it. Yeah. And so, uh, so we have. So I built this one here. And this. It's a uh, gorgeous. A honey burst. And uh, it has Gibson pickups. Four four ninety R and T. Um, deluxe pickups. Yep. Uh, but tell us about. Because I was with you through this whole thing. The yes. Tops. First of all, the star, uh, top is highly figured. No seam, one piece. You don't see that very often. Um, I have a source out in Pennsylvania that gets me the wood. And um, they're pricey, but, uh, well, you can see. You can't put a price, I mean, you can't beautiful. put a price on that. It's, and the tone is, well. I'll have some better pictures for you guys in the in the light, but th- it's, uh, it's a stout neck on here. Nice, not too big, not too small, but it's it's. Comfortable. Very comfortable. Let's go. A great fat bottom end. Gibson pickups on these. Why not go with like a boutique or anything like that? With well, if you're looking for a Gibson town, uh, go with a Gibson pickup. Yeah, yeah. A little special wiring configuration that you kind of came up with on your own that we keep secret. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So th- I mean, this is absolutely amazing. Like I said, there'll be more pictures, but it's it's your perfect ES three thirty five weight, kind of modeled after the fifty nine. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh. The, the break off of the gold and the uh, the tortoise and the honey everywhere, like I said, I'll put more pictures up, but if you guys can see that, it's amazing, you know, and, and notice how he went with the, a, a gold inlay, you know, it's really, really great, and I'm not just saying it because the guy's standing here, he already paid me for today, <laughs> but this is, uh, like I said, we'll take this out in the light, we'll get some better pictures, and, and oh, the fret wire on this is gold as well. That is uh, what they call an Evo wire, which is in hardness between a standard 18 nickel and stainless. And also has an added feature of its gold yeah. uh, throughout, and it goes with the hardware. So, Bill 
built for the road and built for comfort. We, we me and you, but we both feel the same way about ES three thirty fives. Like it's like the Cadillac of guitars. It is. I think so. I noticed too when when constructing it, you get everything so it's zero deck. That your bridge posts aren't up high. Right. You start with it uh, with a dead flat guitar, so there's no stress on the guitar. There's no nothing. So yeah, you're you just you getting... find over the years if uh, you you know it's just on any Gibson, uh, they start to lean forward if yeah. they're up there, and so I design it with the neck pitch so that the bridge is almost bottomed out. And also with this setup, uh, there's no uh, thumb wheels. Yeah. This is a stout quarter inch, so it's as secure as you're going to get it. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. And I think that everything with bridges, you know, even my strats, I don't leave them floating. I, I, I deck them so mm -hmm. they're flush. And mm -hmm. I think that's a direct transfer from whatever you have going on here it, all over is. the place. You know what I mean? And I think this kind of simulates what, what's going on there. Even though it's a semi-hollow body, there's still you know, a, a block of wood in here, and that's transferring everything that's going on right down the slab. That's right. You know, because it's all connected in there. You it know, is, it doesn't yeah. look like it, but that's all glued all to each other. Block, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. So, so you are in Bristol, Rhode Island. Um, we're up there. We're, we're cold. We get the cold weather, but I mean, even the uh, the guild that we worked on, that's a, he's up from out of town. You get a lot of, you outsource a lot of work. Is there uh, an email or a website that anybody can email you at if they're interested in getting some yeah, work Yeah, I have an email, um, uh, jbguitars JB at cops.net. I'll put that down at the bottom so you guys can check it out. So there you go, guys. That's our first luthier sit-down. Um, I hope to do more of these. Like I said, uh, I will put Joe's information down at the bottom. So if anybody wants to reach out and see if they can get some work done, if you need a fret job, you need a simple setup, or you just need to, you, you have something wrong with the guitar and you need something looked at, or if you want a custom guitar built, you can email Joe and uh, you guys can take it from there. I'll put uh, more pics of this in a video maybe while we're talking. But uh, yeah, so uh, thank you guys. Any comments, leave them at the bottom. Any likes, dislikes, whatever you want to do. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe because it helps out. And uh, me and Joe are going to get back to picking. So thanks, guys. Have a good one. Peace. So what were you thinking a couple of years ago when you let me walk into this place and start ripping frets out of guitars? Well, first of all, when uh, just looking at you, I, I wasn't sure I was going to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you taught me a lot. Uh, yeah. I remember my first fret job that I had to do. You said you handed me the pliers and said, "Here, you're gonna do it." Exactly. And, I, and after I fainted. Uh, well, I knew that I had someone who was interested in in guitar. Yeah. And interested in learning. I read in my own experience. I wish I had a mentor. Yeah. And so I, <clears throat> I found myself in a position of being a mentor, and I said, "Well, this is pretty cool," and this guy is interested in. Uh, and um, he's a mechanic, good with his hands, a smart kid, and he's going to go for it. Yeah, I did. And uh, he's learned quite a bit. Um, and even at uh, my experience at my age, I find at times I have to search for a certain amount of extra patience. Patience. <laughs> That's uh, one thing I don't have in my toolbox. Yes, and, and Nick is still searching for a little more. 